Coming up next, Book TV presents Afterwards, an hour-long program where we invite guest hosts to interview authors. This week, Democratic political strategist Stan Greenberg discusses his latest work, Dispatches from the War Room, in the trenches with five extraordinary leaders, which takes readers through the campaigns of five well-known politicians, including former U.S. President Bill Clinton and former South African President Nelson Mandela. Mr. Greenberg discusses his book with Republican strategist Mary Madeline. Welcome, book lovers. Welcome, C-SPAN lovers. C-SPAN, that changed the world and books that are still selling, not as well as they were a couple of mm. years ago. But um, it's an industry that hasn't changed much, and there are people who love them madly and carry them everywhere with mm -hmm. them. <laughs> uh, I'm Mary Madeline, and I'm here today with Stan Greenberg. I, there is a formal introduction of mm. you, but I'm going to do one from your bio and from our history. Mm, thank you. And I've been knowing you forever, but I didn't know you were so, such a big cheese. <laughs> Stanley B. Greenberg, CEO of Greenberg Quinlan Rosner, strategic advice and research for leaders, companies, and campaigns. This is Stan's seventh book we're going to talk about today, not his strategic advice. Dispatches from the War Room. In the Trenches with Five Extraordinary Leaders, the seventh of political-type books. You've written these other great histories, The Two Americas, Our Current Political Deadlock, How to Break It, described by my husband as the most important book in American mm. politics, in my true, opinion. True, true. Middle Class Dreams, A New Majority, Legitimizing the Illegitimate Race and State in Capitalist Development, Politics, and Poverty. Most political junkies would see Stan yeah. as a pollster. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Does yep. bi not bipartisan polling, but in a bipolar bi polling. Bipolar. We're going to talk yeah. about bipolarism too. Uh, you have done polling with public opinion strategies. Indeed. So we. I'm not your only Republican friend. And besides politics, you were advisor to the Nobel Prize winning campaign at Ban Landmines. This is amazing. You've done all kinds Thank of you. stuff. And the connection with James Carville, we should put out, since I am the wife of, uh, is the, the uh, D Corps, which is... Democracy Corps. Democracy Corps. It just gets shortened for when we're just hanging for, around. From amongst friends. Okay, <laughs> democracycorps.com. It's a great polling. Now, I love some of these things that you've been called because we're going to talk about the uh, not positive things that people have to say about pollsters in general okay. today. But because of Stan's excessive and unique success in all these campaigns all over the world, he's been called the father of modern polling techniques, the De Niro of all political consultants, an unrivaled international guru, Esquire magazine. I'm tired. I know. I'm tired. All right, so mm. let's just say all of this. Plus, he's mm. married to Congressman Rosa DeLora. Who is? Um, I delight and wished me luck, and also gives you a hug. And, and hugs back to you, Rosa. And then let me start there with this, because in the interest of not necessarily a disclosure, but for political junkies who may be viewing this, um, we are friends. We've been friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm friends. We're also friends with Rosa. I don't can think of very many issues that the two of us, the three of us, or including my husband, mm -hmm. or many days the four of us agree on. Yet we are friends, and I want our viewers out there to understand that the, our, the presence of affection or the absence of de political debate here today is mm. not evidence of moral ambiguity on our parts <laughs> or some, mm. uh, what some would call everybody in Washington is uh, somehow tainted by having these kind of friendships. So I kind of do want to start there. The, when I started this and you started this, there... Uh, there wasn't this, I don't want to care, I don't want to have this trite conversation about polarization, but I had Democratic friends, you had Republican friends. We're mm -hmm. in a post-partisan era where everybody wants kumbaya, why can't we all just get along, mm -hmm. Rodney King, yet when people of opposite parties do get along or do have associations, they're distrusted by their own parties and by their friends. What happened there? How does, why is that? I and I'm constantly asked the question. Now, does James really, what do they really talk about? You know, I said, I said they talk about their kids, they talk about family, they talk about their values, they talk about life. <laughs> where, where do you, but, it's not just James and me, it's right. James and, um, and I really don't want to get into this, because uh, I do want to talk more about the book, but 
when you or James do anything, and you do a lot of things in opposition to my interests, my mm -hmm. party's interests, conservatives' interests, I always get yelled at by my friends. I'm carrying the weight of you guys, and I presume the the opposite is true. I think I wrote a, I wrote a letter this week criticizing an, uh, an organization that you're involved in. I wrote a, a kind of a chiding, I thought, fun um, letter this week, and we didn't even talk about it. We didn't, you know, we can have these exchanges. Research um, in Republic, can, and they writ airs, and Ed Gillespie, and they've responded, and we have time. We'll get to that, but you know, but we can, you know, but we can have a human discussion and. Talk about life and family where your daughter's going to school. They are, they are doing great, and your kids too. So that's what we talk okay. about, all of us together. And I just want to clear that out because there is a place, still a place, uh, where we, don't you hate that? We can disagree without being disagreeable. But let's well, get, that's probably not true. No, yeah, that's <laughs> not, that isn't always true. Sometimes you just don't. Go no, there. but I'm sure it's not personal. And I didn't feel when I wrote the letter this week, critic, you know, criticizing Research and Republican to Ed, uh, I was not personally critical. I'm not, and I don't feel personally critical. We disagree, which uh, is fine. And mm -hmm. it, and which is a good segue to polling in general, because yes. in anybody's interested in these polling debates, uh, which aren't ideological debates, they're they're usually methodological debates, mm -hmm. which I think mm -hmm. was the essence of that, or questioning the the. Sentencing or parsing and all of that, all of that is online mm -hmm. to see. Research mm -hmm. Republic at democracycorps.com. But that does segue me into the profession of polling because mm -hmm. what I do want to do, rather than debate, because everybody knows you're a liberal and I'm a conservative, and where we're going to stand on these respective mm -hmm. positions, to pull back the curtain, which is what you do in dispatches from the war room on the profession and on politicians. So let's start with the profession mm -hmm. and let's start with the you the person, the pollster, who's mm -hmm. the guru uh, of American and, and international uh, polling. Why, um, mm -hmm. there is a, uh, two different views of this. Users of it think of it as uh, the crack cocaine of politics, if money is the mother's mouth, polling is the, polls are the crack cocaine, but viewers watching you do your craft think mm -hmm. you're a Rasputin, they think it's black magic. What's mm -hmm. the... How do you see yourself? Well, I, I actually am uh, in the book. This is, this is not a defense of pollsters and consulting, if anything. Um, the book is pretty self-critical um, and critical of the profession. Um, and so I'm, you know, now I'm, look, I also, you know, I value the leader. I respect the leaders I work for. One of the things I'm, you know, that I try to underscore here in the end that these leaders believe in things, or things that brought them to politics, that politics can be honorable, that that's you know, a very important part of this. And, I, um, and whether or not one is for Barack Obama, I'm sure you were not, one of, the, one of the things I think his candidacy and maybe presidency are making possible is a kind of reduction of cynicism, a little bit about politics and whether you can try to be hopeful and, and whether you, you know, reduce your level of skepticism a little bit and give political leaders a little chance to, you know, to some space to, to do what they say they're going to uh, do. And so as I've gone around the world and, you know, in this book tour, which I've done in Britain and Israel and in South Africa, pe everywhere, people are just less cynical. I mean, there's a little bit more openness to, you know, to paying attention to, to leaders, why they did what they, you know, did. Now, on the other hand, I'm not, you know, I don't come out of this book and, you know, more respecting of my profession. I do think my profession does like to create a sense of mystery, um, that Rasputin-like powers, and you know, it, and, you know, they're, and I'm fairly blunt in the book about both the descriptions of me, but also the other, the other leaders who do it. And for me, the key piece of this is, is whether you're in it for, whether you have a purpose, and whether the leaders you're working for have a purpose. And we, you know, at the time that I worked, you know, for Bill Clinton, you know, I, that was part of a of the Democratic Party Recent becoming. Recent unpleasantness, we still call that in our house. <laughs> uh, when I worked for Bill Clinton, who was a new Democrat, who changed his own you know party, made it an electable national party, a more mainstream middle class party, you know, which we were part of. James was part of as, um, as well. Not just that election; it was something that brought me to him. It's what you know. It's what I was working on, uh, and it's what Bill Clinton was working on. And I thought in a lifetime of you know making the party electable in the South and then ultimately nationally. Uh